And do all of you understand why we can't have one pair of electrons sit down without another pair standing up? It's to preserve the octet rule, right? You can't have more than four bonds to an atom, and that's what would happen if you didn't simultaneously make this bond while breaking this bond. Okay, like if we let these electrons sit down without making these stand up, that would, re that would result in five bonds to that nitrogen. Okay, so hey, let's also uh, don't forget to enclose our resonance structures in brackets. And remember your double-headed resonance arrows in between each resonance structure. All right, so just to be thorough, let's cover the last possible thing you could have been thinking in this situation. Were any of you wondering why we couldn't make any other electrons stand up besides this one in the double bond? What I mean is, when we were looking for a pair of electrons to stand up to make room for this new double bond that was forming, did any of you want to make this single bond stand up instead of this double bond? Because a lot of people want to move these electrons in the single bond to form more resonance structures. So hey, if you want to do that, you guys, let me remind you. What are the only electrons that you can move when drawing resonance structures? Electrons in lone pairs or multiple bonds. You can't move electrons that are in single bonds like this one, right you guys? And the reason why is because you'll change the connectivity of the compound. You will have broken this atom off of the compound. Hey, you don't believe me? Let's try it out and see what happens, okay? So, hey, let me erase this real quick, and let's try out that possibility. Okay, so here was the deal, you guys. What happened was, let's reenact this, okay? So what happened was, we made one of these lone pairs sit down to form a bond, right, you guys? We then had to choose electrons in a bond to stand up to preserve the octet, right? So, Hey, we chose to make electrons in this double bond stand up before. But the question is now, could we have made this single bond stand up, the electrons in this single bond stand up? So let's try that. And let me just do this in a different color. Let me do this in blue, let's just say. So let's make the electrons in this single bond stand up instead of the electrons in this double bond. And let's see what happens. And this would result in a structure that looked like this. The nitrogen, you have the two oxygens on the bottom. You would just form this double bond right here between this nitrogen and this oxygen. But hey, check out what happens, you guys. This oxygen will now be separated from the compound. This oxygen will now be floating away on its own. The only thing that this oxygen was stuck to that nitrogen by was by these electrons. If we move those electrons, we break the bond and change the connectivity. Okay, and if we change the connectivity, it's no longer a resonance structure. And hopefully this proves to you why we wouldn't be able to do that, okay? So hey, that's resonance, you guys. Go home and practice all the problems in your book that you can on resonance to make sure you know how to do this. You want to not only be able to draw resonance structures, but also be good at drawing these curved arrows that we've been drawing, okay? Every reaction you'll see from now on will use curved arrows, so start practicing that now. And remember, a curved arrow is just a way to show you where electrons are moving to. A curved arrow is pointing to the place where lone pairs will sit down, or pointing to the place where electrons and bonds will have to stand up. Also, realize that there's only two ways electrons can exist. Standing up as lone pairs, or sitting down as bonds. And hopefully thinking about electrons this way will make it not seem so abstract. Okay, so, hey you guys, these were the four sources of reactivity. We had formal charge telling us full charges are sources of reactivity because all atoms want to be neutral. We then had polarity telling us partial charges are sources of reactivity for the same reason. We then named nine functional groups because they each react in characteristic ways according to each functional group. And hey, lastly we talked about the idea of resonance. And resonance is important when looking for reactivity because resonance structures give us an accurate depiction of what a compound actually looks like. If we don't know what a compound looks like, like if it has any charges or anything, then we have no idea how that compound is going to react. We need resonance and resonance structures to show us accurate structures of compounds so we can judge how those compounds will react. So hey, that finishes up part one of OCHEM Basics, reactivity. 
Ochem Basics Part 2 deals with covalent bonding, how bonds form and why. Okay, so we'll pick up here next time.